Super Mario Bros. Wonder has been receiving praise across the board, and one of the primary reasons the game is already so beloved would have to be the level design. The levels in this game are some of the most imaginative in the entire Super Mario series. In large part, that has to do with the Wonder Flower, which is placed in nearly every single stage and can cause basically anything to happen. It could turn you into a slime, shift the entire perspective of the level to being top down, to even spawning in a ton of missiles. But with that being said, while almost every level is fantastic, some are still definitely better than others. So today, I thought it'd be fun to rank every level in Super Mario Bros. Wonder from the worst to the best. Now how exactly am I going to be ranking these? Well simply put, it's about how fun and creative it is. I'll also be looking at each level from a 100% perspective, so the purple 10 coins, which I'll just be calling purple coins, and the secret exits will also play a part in a stage's ranking. One other important thing to consider is what actually qualifies for the list. By pausing the game, you're able to get a list of the courses, but I'm not going to be counting everything here for the rankings since they're not all standard levels. If you watch my previous video, I mean on Mario Wonder, you know that I considered any level to have yellow text here to be a bonus stage. So basically, this video is the inverse of that. If it doesn't have yellow text and isn't something like a poplin house, it counts. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right into the list. 77, Sunbaked Desert Special, Pole Block Allure. This has one simple thing that I hate more than pretty much anything else in the 2D Mario series, an auto-scroll. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I generally like to be able to run through levels quickly. It makes coming back to levels significantly more fun, and auto-scrollers are basically the exact opposite of what I want. These limit how much you can move by having the camera on a set, and very often slow, path. That is certainly the case here, where the camera feels like it moves at a snail's pace. The idea behind this level is that you have to use the pulse to navigate the sky, which honestly is pretty fun. It can take a bit of practice to get used to how they work, but once you do, navigating here is both fun and unique. The Wonder Flower here also plays into this mechanic by causing a ton of poles to spawn in and move on their own. The purple coins here are also pretty well placed. I especially like the first one here that's attached to an armad that you have to grab before it goes off screen. So yeah, everything in this level is a lot of fun, but the auto scroller basically ruins it. This is one of the levels in the game's special world, meaning it's got a much higher difficulty rating than most levels. So that means it's pretty likely that you'll die a few times while completing this, which also means suffering through the slow auto-scroll multiple times. Granted, it does get faster near the end of the level, but the beginning slog is what you're going to have to go through most of the time, and it overall just makes the level feel a bit annoying. That's really the worst I can say about it, though. I can't even bring myself to call this a bad level, per se. It's just a bit annoying. I've been replaying a lot of the older 2D Mario games recently, and let me just say, huh? they've got some bad levels. For being Wonder's worst level, this is honestly not that bad in the grand scheme of things, which just goes to show how high quality the level design in this game truly is. 70 6, the Sharp Trial Launched a Victory While this is technically not an auto-scroller, a majority of this level takes place on a moving platform, and while that is definitely much less limiting, it's still a bit slow. The idea here is that you're placed on a platform and by jumping, you can shoot out a hoppy cat, which can defeat enemies and hit certain blocks. The thing is, this hoppy cat is super unreliable. Not only does the delay between you jumping and it jumping feel weird, but if you jump at the wrong time, the hoppy cat will just completely fly past your platform. So while the main portion of this level I did find to be a smidge annoying, the Wonder Flower part is great. This is one of the levels where you become a hoppy cat and the climb here is fantastic. There's even a random fire flower sprite from Super Mario Bros here. I guess it's here to show how fire this section is, I don't know man. But yeah again, this is another level with good ideas, but some pretty annoying parts as well. 75, Petal Isle Special, Way of the Goomba. This level is all about the Wonder Flower effect where you turn into a Goomba. The Goomba's whole gimmick is pretty much that it moves super slow and can barely jump. Personally, I'm not really a big fan of that since it makes this level feel like a drag, especially since there are several portions where you have to wait for spike balls to roll past you. I will say this does lead to some solid puzzles for the purple coins, but otherwise, this is just sort of tedious to go through. 74, the Sugar Star Trial, Across the night sky. This level actually starts out pretty strong, giving you immediate sight on the level's Wonder Flower. In order to get to it, you have to dodge these sugar stars, which is honestly pretty difficult. Once you get the Wonder Flower, though, the level completely falls off. What it does is give you a star, and stars will also come shooting down, so you basically have an infinite amount of them. This lasts for the entire stage, meaning this basically has no challenge at all except from the very start. There's no annoying parts about this, which is why it's above the last few, but it's just sort of a nothing level. 73, Fluff Puff Peaks, Flying Battle. 72, Deep Magma Bog, Flying Battleship. And 71, Petal Isles, Flying Battleship. All three of these are down here for basically the exact same reason. They're all auto-scrollers. That makes each of these levels take an incredibly long time to complete, making them overall pretty tedious. There are definitely elements I like about them, though. I like the firework enemies in the first one, the pulling mechanic to stop the fire was cool, and the last one being based around Lakitu's Cloud is pretty creative. All three of these share the exact same wonder effect, where a massive target will be placed on the player, and that spot will every so often explode. 
While that is kind of cool, it does get a bit repetitive. The last note I have for these has to do with their endings. Airship levels in other Mario games usually end with a boss fight, but in Wonder, you just sort of have to run to the end of a room and jump on a switch. Every single one of these felt very disappointing. It always gave off the feeling of, that's it. Still definitely not bad levels, I just rather play the levels above these first. 70. Scram Skedaddlers This is one of the first few levels in the game, and it's pretty solid for the most part. It's centered around the Skedaddlers, which run away from the player and shoot out nuts towards them. These mechanics lead to two pretty good purple coins, one where you have to chase down the Skedaddler, and another one where you have to jump off its nut. The only thing that really brings down this level is its Wonder Flower, as it's just another star run. I love running around with a superstar with no challenge. It's so much fun. <laughs> The Wonder Flower does come much later in the level though, so it's much better than the Sugar Star level we saw before. 69, Pokepede Pass. This is based around two things. First are the titular Pokepedes, which will ride around tracks and hurt the player. The second thing are these snow blocks, which can be broken by just jumping into them. They're both used fairly well around the level, though it's not super complex. This level is also brought down by its Wonder Flower, which just makes the level snow. That barely changes anything. Sure, a few snow blocks get added every once in a while, but I honestly think this might be the single least effective Wonder Flower in the game. At least it doesn't make the stage an auto win like the star run flowers, I guess. 68, Mama Mouthful. This level is centered around the Mama enemies, which are able to kill you in just a single bite. The level design in this is pretty good. I especially like the purple coin you have to get by jumping on a Mama's mouth while it's open. The thing that holds this back though is that this is our other stage to have the Goomba Wonder Flower. Again, I just didn't like how slow it was. I get that's the point and the puzzles here are interesting, but when the levels in the game are all so good, any minor inconvenience is gonna hurt a stage in the ranking. Overall, I did enjoy this stage. It's just that the Goomba section is a bit too slow for me. 67, Nosher Lair. This is all about the Nosher enemies, which are pretty fun to deal with. They can break blocks by eating them, so they're basically wearing down the stage as you play. This level also has some really good purple coins, one requiring you to jump off a Nosher in a pit, and the other forcing you to kill enemies using the Nosher. The Wonder Flower, though, is a bit weak. It makes a giant horde of Noshers spawn behind you, but since the screen is auto-scrolling anyway, that basically makes this level one of those. This is still a solid level, but that definitely brings it down a bit. 66, Leaping Smackroll. This level is also based around an enemy that can break things by eating them, this time being the Leaping Smackroll. The major difference between these two levels, though, is that this one is underwater. Now, if this was in a previous 2D Mario game, this level would have ranked much lower due to that fact. However, Mario Wonder includes the Dolphin Kick badge, which makes movement in the underwater stages actually quite a bit of fun. I still find it worse than Mario's normal movement, but it does make these stages much more fun than annoying. The Wonder Flower here is also more interesting than the last level, requiring us to collect five Wonder Tokens while a giant Leaping Smackroll chases is after us. So yeah, despite being a water stage, it was still quite a bit of fun. 65, Robert Cave. This is also an underwater level, but there are a few segments that take place above ground, which is one reason I'm placing it above the last. The main reason I like this more though comes down to the more creative Wonder Flower effect. Basically the air and water swap, which is just a lot of fun to play through. Overall, despite how low they may have ranked, Mario Wonder did a great job with its water stages. 64, Armad's on the roll. This is just your pretty standard desert course. The new Armad enemies are kinda neat, but really this is some pretty standard Mario Desert stuff. The Wonder Flower also feels sort of basic, just speeding up the level to be really fast. It's kinda cool, don't get me wrong, it's just clearly not as creative as most of the other effects. 63, Valley Full of Snoodles. This level is pretty much the same thing with the last one, with just a few minor tweaks. Instead of Armads, the enemy here are the Snoodles, which I found to be a bit more fun to defeat with the Fire Flower. The level design here is also a bit more interesting, as it relies on slopes and bumpers instead of the sand in the last level. The Wonder Flower here is equally as inspired, though, because this just slows down the level. Now, I know it may seem a bit hypocritical of me to put the slow level above the fast one after I complained about levels being too slow, but, uh, shut up. Both of these levels are certainly good, just kind of basic when compared to everything else. 62, Countdown to Drop Down. The main element for this stage are these platforms that will count down whenever you jump on them. If they reach zero, you'll fall right through it. This leads to some pretty interesting platforming, and I like the use of the melon piranha plants here as you have to jump on the seeds to avoid the platforms. This also leads to quite a few interesting purple coins, like this one where you have to have the coin fall through the platforms, and this other one where you have to fall through the platforms. There are a few things holding this stage back though. For example, there are a lot of moving platform segments. Luckily, you can skip them with Lakitu clouds, but it's still worth mentioning. The real problem though is the Wonder Flower, which is just a super simple fall through the sky with a superstar. There's basically no challenge here. Ignoring that though, it's still a pretty fun stage. 61, Cruising with Linking Lifts. Despite being a somewhat slow moving platform level, I really like the idea behind it. Basically, you have to hit these linking blocks and they'll be added to your platform, but the blocks also disappear as you go. I also think the Wonder Flower here works well with it. Basically, a bunch of Lakitu will fly behind you throwing out Wonder Tokens, so you have to try and grab all five 
have them before the time limit runs out. It is still a moving platform level at the end of the day, but I can't deny that it was pretty fun. 60. Pipe Rock Plateau Palace We've reached the first of the game's four palaces, which are essentially the game's castles. First off, the main level itself is pretty alright. I will say I'm not a huge fan of enemies spawning from these cloud things, since they can sort of spawn right on top of your head sometimes. It does make these levels harder though, so I can't complain too much. Speaking of enemies, this is also the first level in the game with dry bones. Yippee! The Wonder Flower here is kinda mid, just causing the pipes around the stage to fall. It does lead to some interesting obstacles, but it mostly remains pretty basic. After the main level though, we of course have to end with a boss fight. Now if you saw my nitpicks video, you know that I think Wonder's bosses are really weak. In every single palace, you just fight Bowser Jr., which gets pretty stale. That brings all the palace levels down a significant amount, even if every fight is slightly different. In this one, you have to fight Bowser Jr. while you're both changing sizes. So yeah, this level is just pretty generic. It works as a first palace, but isn't too special on its own. 59. Welcome to the Flower Kingdom Being the game's first level, it's understandably pretty simplistic. It acts as a basic introduction to both the elephant fruit and wonder flower. The elephant is shown off pretty well by this purple coin, requiring you to break the bricks around it. The wonder flower here is also pretty simple, but that's more than fair, basically just making all the pipes in the level act a bit quirky. I do also have to mention that I like how you can go into the foreground through one of the pipes. That's pretty neat. Yes, it's definitely a basic level, but it's pretty dang good at its job. 58. Swamp Pipe Crawl This level is all about pushing and parkouring with pipes. I really like this pushing puzzle where you have to push the bottom pipe first so that the top pipe can reach the spot it's supposed to go. The second purple coin also drove me insane. For some reason, I could not find this thing for a good 30 minutes. It is in a pretty clever spot though, requiring you to break these bricks, move this pipe, and then enter into this other pipe. I definitely think this is a great coin, but I also think it's evil. The reason this level is placing low though is because of its wonder flower, which also just sort of makes the pipes weird. Since this is a repeat effect, it feels much more boring the second time, especially since this is also a level in World 1. It's not bad by any means, I just think they could have come up with something a bit better. 57. The Final Trial Zip Track Attack This level has us riding along the titular zip tracks. These are quite a lot of fun as they make you go super fast, but at the same time, it makes the level kind of simplistic as you pretty much just need to press one button for the entire stage. Normally, that would make me put this a bit lower, but I do like the wonder effect letting us become the hoppy cat again. I will say though, completing this level is a bit annoying. There are basically two exits in this level, but the main one doesn't give you a wonder seed, so technically you would only ever need to complete the secret one, which you reach by beating the stage with the wonder flower. Problem is, you can't get the second purple coin and the wonder flower in one go through, which I personally think is kind of dumb. Still a fun stage though, so I can't rank it too low. 56. Sproings in the Twilight Forest Okay, first off, the aesthetic is amazing, as the whole stage basically is just in silhouettes. The reason that's done is for the stage's wonder flower, which stretches your characters out to be really tall, and let's just say they look strange in normal lighting. While this effect is pretty creative, I personally didn't love playing with it on. It felt super weird not being able to wall jump, and a lot of the stage relied on you crouch walking, which just made the movement a bit slower. This is still definitely a good stage, but it just didn't feel great for me to play. 55. Fluff Puff Peaks Palace This is the same Wonder Flower gimmick, but this time thrown into a palace, making it a bit trickier. I do like the purple coins here quite a bit, and overall, I think this works a bit better with the wonder effect. This level also ends with another Bowser Jr. fight, but this time he changes the floor from being normal, to ice, and then to this weird goo thing. I think that that's slightly more interesting than the first boss fight we saw, but it's still just Bowser Jr. 54. Angry Spikes and Sinking Pipes The combination of sinking pipes and spikes makes for a pretty solid level. It's pretty fun to run through because it's pretty easy to get hit by a spike ball. As for the Wonder Flower though, why would you put it in a pit that looks like it's going to kill you? Okay, beside that, the effect is pretty neat, putting you in this tower where you have to jump over the spike balls as they roll at you. Not the most creative effect, but still pretty fun. 53. Here come the Hoppos. The Hoppos were some of my favorite new enemies in the game. They were really fun to bounce off of. They're used pretty well here. I especially like the portion where you have to put two hoppos in between these pipes, which leads you into a sub area for a purple coin. The general design for this layout is great, though I do honestly think the wonder flower is a bit weak. It spawns in a ton of hoppos and you have to grab the wonder seed on top of the big one. This can be completed super quickly though, so it's really nothing too special. 52. The Anglefish Trial Ready, Aim, Fly This uses the anglefish as a solid obstacle, as you have to avoid them jumping out of the water toward you. This is used pretty well throughout the level. I especially like the second purple coin where you have to pull this handle while avoiding the fish below you. I also have to say, I totally did not do the third purple coin correctly. What I thought you had to do is jump off this anglefish while holding a big snail shell and then throw it at the blocks in midair. Yeah, I forgot you could throw things upward in this game. I can't really complain though because that was pretty fun. The wonder flower here is also pretty solid, having us climb up a tower by jumping off the anglefish. I think that's a pretty good expansion on the concept and a good way to end off this level. 51. The Midway Trial Hop To It This level's theme is pretty cute. It's based around the hoppy cats again, but this time 
time you have to chase a red one up a tower. Once you manage to catch it, you'll collect the stage's wonder flower, which obviously turns you into a hoppy cat to help climb the rest of the level. This level also has some pretty solid purple coins. I especially like this one in the sub area where you have to get a hoppy cat to hit a switch for you. My only real problem with this level is that it's a bit too easy, but I still had a lot of fun with it. 50. Bull Rush Express This entire level takes place on the backs of a bull rush stampede. Due to how fast they move, this level is actually quite difficult as it's fairly easy to run into one of the many enemies in your path. It's quite simple, but I enjoyed it a decent amount. The only thing I didn't really like was the secret exit. All you need to do for it is break these brick blocks at the end. I guess this is supposed to challenge you to keep an elephant throughout the whole stage, but you could just hold an elephant fruit in your spare slot and get this exit super easily. That basically makes you have to play through this whole stage twice, which I do think was a bit unnecessary. 49. Blooms of the Desert Skies The blooms are a really fun enemy, and it was a joy anytime they popped up in the game. This level utilizes them in pretty great ways for both its general platforming and its purple coins. The Wonder Flower is also hidden inside of a bloom, which is pretty cool. Collecting the Wonder Flower makes you This effect is honestly kind of boring since you constantly get stars, meaning you're invincible until you get the Wonder Seed pretty much. While the Wonder Effect may not be the most interesting thing, the normal level was still pretty fun. 48, Pipe Rock Plateau Special, Bounce Bounce Bounce. This is a pretty simple but fun level as you just spend the whole time jumping on massive hoppos. That makes this level fairly tricky if you're trying to get all the purple coins since it could be hard to stay on top of them. Sure, it's pretty short, but I still had a lot of fun with it. 47, Jump Jump Jump. This level is also pretty simple. The ground below you will appear and disappear to the sound of the music, so you have to to time your jumps accordingly. While it starts out pretty slow, the level picks up the pace as it goes on, making the ending feel pretty intense. This is definitely a fairly short level, but I can't deny that it was pretty fun. There is another level that's similar to this one later, but due to how much harder that one is, it's gonna be much higher on the list. 46. Upshroom Downshroom This level focuses on both pumpkins and the titular upshrooms and downshrooms. This is far from the most complex level theme out there, but the changing heights of the mushrooms do lead to some pretty solid puzzles and platforming. I especially like the second purple coin here, which is placed far above the ground. As for the Wonder Flower, the jack-o'-lantern, <laughs> I love the aesthetic here. The song and colors are just so much fun and it makes this level pretty memorable. Mechanically, it's really nothing special, just sort of making the mushrooms bounce the pumpkins around, but the fun aesthetic is enough for me to still like it quite a bit. 45, the Hoppy Cat Trial, Hop Hop Away. Here we have ourselves another level focused on the Hoppy Cats, this being their introduction level. For an introduction, I think this does a pretty great job as it shows off their jump mimicking pretty well. What I also like about this level is how oftentimes the hoppy cats will actually come from off screen, so you have to be very cautious as you never know when one might strike. Surprisingly enough, the Wonder Flower here doesn't actually turn us into a hoppy cat, rather having giant hoppy cats spawn around us, which we have to use to destroy the terrain. Not only is this pretty fun, but I also really like the purple coin here. You can't just jump for it like you normally would since that would put a hoppy cat in your way, so you actually have to wrap around the area to avoid jumping. I thought that was really cute, and as a whole, I think this level was pretty fun. 44. Wave Ride Through the Magma Tube This is a moving platform level, which yes, does make it a bit slow, but I honestly quite like this one. What's unique about this is that it's placed in a lava tunnel, meaning there's not only lava below you, but also above. That above lava is honestly the more dangerous one of the two. It's super easy to forget about it and then just jump into it like an idiot. The fire spikes being placed on the platforms here help make this level feel even more intense, especially when the platforms start dipping into lava. My favorite part about the level though would have to be the Wonder Flower, as it'll spawn a giant spike statue behind you that fires out meteors. What you have to do is dance around those meteors until the time limit expires, which is just extremely fun to do. 43. Evade the Seeker Bullet Bills The Seeker Bullet Bills are a pretty cool enemy. They'll lock onto your position and then jump off the surface they're on toward you. The only thing that kind of holds this level back would have to be the Wonder Flower, and even then, I can't really say it's bad. Basically, it'll put you onto a ship and you have to fire the ship's cannon to stop the attacking Seekers. That is a really cool idea, but since it's an auto-scroller, it does go on for a bit longer than I would have liked. Still, this is a lot of fun, but just a bit slow at times. 42. Beware of the Rifts This level is very unique, as the main obstacles are these weird rifts that just move around the stage. The Wonder Flower also expands upon these rifts by turning them into Cosmic Mario, who I am very happy to see return. Here he'll just chase you down as you collect 5 Wonder Tokens. It's honestly pretty easy since you can hit these POW blocks to stun him, but I still did enjoy this segment a decent amount. 41. Pull Turn Burn As the name implies, the main gimmick behind this level are these pull handles. These will be able to move obstacles out of the way to help you get through the stage. This is a pretty fun mechanic, and I also quite enjoy doing as much of the stage as possible without pulling the handles. The biggest part of this stage though is of course the Wonder Flower, which will drop you below the stage 
stage and allow you to swim through lava. You have to use this ability to collect 5 wonder tokens, which is just super cool. However, this is a bit weird because for some reason, you're just fully invincible during this. There are a ton of enemies placed here, which I thought were meant to make this harder, but you can just run through all of them. That feels incredibly pointless. I kind of wish the only thing you didn't get hit by was the lava. Still, this level was quite a lot of fun, but I just found that bit a bit weird. 40. Outmaway Valley I think the new Outmaways are pretty cool enemies. They're able to kick ice blocks toward you, so you have to spend this level trying to avoid them. The second and third purple coins use this mechanic super well too. For the second purple coin, you get put into this cave with the entire back wall being kicked forward because of the Outmaways. When you get to the end, you'll see that the purple coin is placed behind a wall out of reach. While it may seem impossible to get, this actually acts as a hint to jump into this pit on the surface, which will lead you directly to the coin. For the third one, you need to ride on an ice block and then jump off of it at just the right time so that you don't die. On top of the fun new enemy, this level also has a pretty good wonder flower as you have to ride on a giant rolling snowball. Yes, that does turn this level into a bit of an auto-scroller, but it's fun so I don't really have too much of a problem with it. One thing I'm not really a huge fan of though is the secret exit. All you have to do to get to the secret exit is just do the wonder flower, which I think is pretty dumb. That forces you to replay the stage twice without any real need to. I'd much rather the end of the wonder flower segment take me back to the normal flagpole. There are a few other levels that do this as well, and I always found it to be a bit annoying, but at least this level was pretty fun, so I didn't mind replaying it too much. 39. Bull Rush Coming Through In a lot of ways, this level is very similar to our last one. This showcases the Bull Rush, which I think are very interesting enemies. They'll charge toward Mario and are able to break blocks they run into. This mechanic is used to get a few purple coins. I especially like this first one here where you have to create a path for the Bull Rush first by ground pounding this tree, and then it can charge into the blocks. You also need this charge to get the stage's Wonder Flower, since you need to get a Bull Rush to run up the slope and shatter these blocks. The flower will cause a stampede of Bull Rush to run through the stage, which is a pretty fun gimmick. Sadly, this is another stage that has its secret exit just be about getting the Wonder Flower, which I again think is kinda dumb. This gets to be higher than the last stage though, because the secret exit flag is super tall for no reason. I mean, it's extremely funny, but like, why did they do this? 38. An Uncharted Area, Wubba Ruins This level is all about slime. You have to go through the slime, avoid slime, and even eventually become slime. Personally, I am a tiny bit mixed on the moving through slime part. While you can go faster by mashing the jump button, it does still feel a bit clunky and slow. I wouldn't necessarily say it feels unfun, especially since the slime isn't used too much throughout the game, but it's not my preferred method of movement. What I definitely can say I enjoyed though was the Wonder Flower. Moving along the walls and ceiling as a slime was super fun, and I'm happy that it was used in quite a few levels. Levels. Finding new ways to go through this level was a lot of fun. This talking flower also said neighbor, and I got reminded of the Hello Neighbor subscribe gif. I need professional help. 37. Muncher Fields Now when I first saw this level, I thought it was going to be very similar to that awful level in Super Mario Bros. 3 where you just run on top of munchers with a star until the very end, but luckily there's a lot more to this. You actually start this level off mostly playing in the background. That's pretty much just an aesthetic thing, but I liked it quite a bit here. Now sadly, once you do return to the main level, you have to just run on the munchers with a star for a while, which does bring this level down a bit since it's not that interesting, but the level picks itself back up with its Wonder Flower. This puts the level in a cool silhouette mode and spawns in a ton of moving platforms that change directions based on where you stand. This can be somewhat slow, but I thought the concept was quite fun. The last thing I want to mention is that I thought the third purple coin was pretty good. It's placed at the end of the stage, and you have to notice that there's a hole in the wall being blocked by munchers. By using this room's red pow block, you're able to get inside, which I think is a pretty great hiding spot. 36. Another Uncharted Area, Swaying Ruins the main mechanic here is that the ground below you will continuously be swaying back and forth. On top of the ground, there are also these sliding spike enemies, which of course act as obstacles that you need to avoid. The purple coins here were also pretty great, as they work with the swing mechanic well. The first one is hidden in the poison until it sways upward, the second one you have to jump on the spike enemy as it sways, and the third one you have to wait for the spike enemy to stop blocking it. Getting to the wonder flower is also pretty fun, as you first have to ride on the spike enemy to the door, and then grab the flower off another spike guy. The wonder flower effect itself is also fairly fun, turning the ground slippery and having the walls become bumpers. I think this level just did a really great job on its theme. 35. Dragon Bone Yard In this level, we get to parkour on the corpses of several dragons. These act as really fun spinning wheels, which makes the platforming here both more interesting and difficult. I also really like what they did for the second purple coin here. First, it requires you to notice that you can run on this wall, then you have to bounce off this bird to get up there, which then brings you into a sub area. From here, you have to run on the dragon wheel until you're eventually able to jump through the hole, giving you the purple coin. From there, the level slows down a bit as you have to go through the level while inside of the rolling dragon wheel. This can be be pretty challenging since you have to be careful not to fall into the hole, and I also like how the third purple coin is placed on the outside of the wheel, forcing you to exit it. That eventually brings you into the Wonder Flower, which is pretty neat as it brings the dragon wheel back to life and you have to ride the dragon for the rest of the stage. Due to how it flies, it can be pretty challenging to stay on it, but I thought that made it a very fun wonder effect. 
Also, when you get the Wonder Seed, the dragon just dies again. Ha <laughs> ha, 34, Downpour Uproar. This level is just a ton of fun to navigate. The central object for this level are these clouds that will be able to drop down waterfalls. By using the Dolphin Kick badge, moving through these is a breeze and are really unique from any other platform in the game. On top of that, I also really like the idea behind this Wonder Flower. You'll start floating off through the sky, and every so often, lightning will flash on your screen, which you obviously have to dodge because I hear getting struck by lightning isn't generally a good thing. Unfortunately, though, they fumbled this effect hard. It was really cool, but then they give you a star, which means you basically don't have to care at all about the rest of this effect. Yeah, I really don't know why they did that, because this would have been way better without the stars, but whatever, I guess. 33, Bluebird Roost. This focuses on the titular Bluebird, which are pretty unique enemies as they actually shoot out platforms that you can stand on. Not only is this used to collect a few of the stage's purple coins, but it's also the main way you'll be navigating through the level as a whole. This is another mostly vertical level, which I think is a great setting to put these guys in, as you have to rely on their platforms while also making sure you don't get shot by them. This level is also meant to showcase the bubble flower a little bit as well, which it does by placing a few flowers in the wall that you can only activate by using the bubbles. Speaking of, the wonder flower effect this time around will actually cause these birds to spew out bubbles of their own, which you have to use to climb the tower quickly. This is honestly pretty easy, but the colorful bubbles are fun to look at, so I think this works as a wonder effect. 32, up and down with puffy lifts. The puffy lift platforms are really interesting. The longer you stand on them, the more they'll shrink, but every time you jump off of them, they'll start to regenerate. That makes you not want to stand on them for too long, or in some cases you do, so that you can get access to purple coins. The big highlight of this course would be the wonder flower, but to even get there, you need to solve a pretty neat puzzle. On the ground here, you may notice some orange particles coming from the Goombrat's feet. While it may not seem very obvious what that is at first, if you kill them all, it'll actually reveal one of the puffy lifts below you, which will take you up to the wonder flower. This flower will actually end up turning you into one of the lifts. Mechanically, this isn't anything too terribly special, but it's just funny seeing us slide and jump around as a weird fluffy block. You can use this form to deflect spike balls, which is actually what you need to do to finish off this segment. So while this is at times quite simple, I had a lot of fun here. 31, Fly to the Blooms. This is another level using the blooms, and I think this uses them fantastically. I already mentioned before, but just jumping off of them is a lot of fun, and this level puts the blooms in some pretty dangerous spots, making it a bit scary to jump on them as well. Not only do they fly horizontally, but a few of them even fly diagonally, making the jumps here a bit more unique. Not only are these guys used as platforms, but they even get to act as obstacles a bit. To get the second purple coin, for example, you have to climb down this tower while blooms are being shot at you, which might knock you into some spikes. The Wonder Flower in this level, while simplistic, is also quite fun. It spawns in a ton of giant blooms, and you have to ride on top of all of them to reach the Wonder Seed. I think the platforming in this level was excellent. I had a lot of fun here. 30, The Desert Mystery. This level is purely focused around the pulling mechanic. Not only is it used to change the level, but the Mumsies are also defeated by pulling their wraps. I just think this mechanic makes the stage really fun to run through. It's cool to change the terrain by pulling on these chains in the background. The Wonder Flower is also quite fun here too, requiring us to actually chase the Wonder Seed through a temple. The obstacles here are pretty good, and I think the gold aesthetic fits super well. You could even take a shortcut if you're good enough, which is pretty neat. 29, Deep Magma Bog Special Solar Roller. This level starts with us having to jump off some bumpers before being thrown right into the Wonder Flower, which turns us into a ball. This is used in a few levels, but what makes this use of it so special here has to do with the fact that the ground you're rolling on is tied to a timer. That makes rolling through here much more intense, as you really don't want to fall into the void. I also really like the usage of bumpers here, as it makes navigation more fun as well. Trying to get all the purple coins also adds a bit of challenge, since they're all placed out of the way, forcing you to lose time off the timer. The level even ends by having us roll on the back of dragons, so I think this is a fantastic use of the transformation. 28, Jewel Block Cave. This is the very first level in the game where you get to try out the brand new Drill Mushroom, and I think this does a pretty great job of showing off what it can do. The main elements in this level are the Jewel Blocks, which can be destroyed by ground pounding on them a few times. If you're using the Drill though, you only need to do it once, which is a good mechanic to show why you might want to be using the Drill as a power-up. They also have plenty of areas that you can only access using the Drill, as it lets you dig underground and through the ceiling. The best part of the level though is definitely the Wonder Flower. Throughout the whole level, you're having to avoid gonks, but this takes it to another level by spawning in a massive one above you. What you need to do is destroy the Jewel Blocks and reach the bottom of the area before the gonk can reach you. This gets very intense, and also works well with the Drill, as it's obviously able to speed up the process a bit. This just did a great job of showing off this power-up in a fun way. 27, Pole Block Passage. It's time for the pole blocks to get their revenge after being the main star in our last place level. I think this level uses them far better though. For starters, it's not an auto-scroller, making this significantly more fun. The uses of the poles are also just better as well. Not only do you have to climb through a tower section using them, but there are also quite a few puzzles based around the blocks here as well. Even the Wonder Flower, while similar to the last place level, is much better here. A ton of poles spawn in, but instead of just needing to climb up them, you also need to collect five Wonder Tokens. This level just uses the pole blocks far better than that one level we saw before. 26, Taylee's Toxic Pond. The Taily are super fun enemies. You can grab onto their vine to swing around and defeat them, but they also drop down spike balls onto you, so you have to be careful. This level utilizes them excellently. 
excellent lane, not only requiring you to swing to get a few purple coins, but also using the spike ball to destroy the floor below you at certain parts. Really though, everyone's favorite part is the Wonder Flower, which makes you take a pop quiz. This is unlike any other effect in the game, and it really catches you off guard. These questions are super specific at points too, but if you're a guess and check legend like me, you'll have no problem passing the quiz. 25. Knucklefest Bowser's Blazing Beats This level is focused around two main elements. The first is of course the Blazing Fist, which acts as a really good obstacle since they're massive and slam down towards the stage. The other element are these really interesting platforms that only move when you jump on them. Pro tip by the way, ground pounding them will make them actually go a bit faster, which I highly recommend doing. While the level starts with these already being pretty solid obstacles, the Wonder Flower turns these up quite a bit. Now the fists are in sync with the music, so you have to try and jump in sync with the background song to avoid them. I also just love the colors in this level. The green backdrop and red hands mix super well together. I also like how this Wonder Flower portion ends with you needing to hide behind blocks until the fists eventually break the Wonder Seed free. This was overall just a super fun level that I thought used its elements extremely well. 24. Rargs in the Ruins this level's main feature revolves around these blocks that turn tangible only when you're looking at them. That is a really neat idea, it's tricky trying to work around these blocks because they could just sort of jump scare you when you aren't expecting it. They're even used to make getting some purple coins more difficult, for example this one you can only collect if you drill beneath them. That also shows us the main enemy for this level being the Rargs. These will jump towards the player as soon as they see them, however they can be stopped if they run into blocks. So the idea for this level is to block their attacks using the unique blue blocks. That's shown off best during the Wonderflower segment, which will shift this level's perspective to being top down. Now you have to be really careful to stop all of the rargs in their path. I just think both of these mechanics worked extremely well with each other. 23. Hot 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 This level is based around these lava blocks, which will every so often heat up and damage anything on top of them. You can, however, put out the blocks by splashing them with water, which is a pretty interesting mechanic. That actually plays into the stage's Wonder Flower a bit as well, since you have a limited amount of time to collect 5 Wonder Tokens, but the area is now filled up with water bubbles that you can swim through. One other interesting thing about this stage is that it's actually got a secret exit, and a pretty sneaky one at that. You have to find this cloud platform in the sky, and by touching the flower here, it'll lead you on a journey back backwards through the stage. If you manage to make it to this block, it'll reveal a hidden door behind it. By going through it, you'll get this really cool looking section that's basically in silhouette, but you can still see the orange light coming from the lava. Running to the end of this segment will get you the secret exit, and I think that's a pretty dang good one. 22. Light Switch Mansion Fun fact about this level, it's literally the only one I completely missed before the final Bowser fight. I don't know how I did, I was trying to 100% everything before I got to the final boss, but whatever I guess. It was probably just cursed because it's a spooky ghost house. Anyway, into this level itself, it's got a really unique mechanic because of the spotlights. These are not only able to kill ghosts, but they're also able to reveal invisible blocks, which are what you have to walk on for a large majority of the level. I especially like how it was used for the second purple coin, as you have to sort of feel your way through an invisible block maze while also in the background. As for the wonder flower though, this will actually spawn in King Boo. First off, it's using the ugly King Boo design, come on. On, Luigi's Mansion King Boo is right there. During this section, King Boo will chase you down, but he'll also do so while singing, which just makes the atmosphere here really fun. The normal boos will also join in a bit, which is also just as cute. In order to keep the enemies in line with the song, it does have to be an auto-scroller, but I don't mind it too much, especially since the auto-scroll is only tied to the Wonder Flower. 21. The semi-final test, Piranha Plant Reprise. And 20. Piranha Plants on Parade. Continuing our singing streak here, we have two more levels that do it, this time through Piranha Plants. Mechanically, it's nothing that special, but man is it just really cute. It's so much fun seeing the piranha plants singing along to the tune and attacking you while they do it. Now I am talking about two different levels here, so what's the difference between them? While the semi-formal test piranha plant reprise is actually much harder. This not only has much trickier jumps, but several bill launchers will also spawn in as you go. Now I love a good challenge, so a more difficult version should mean that it places higher, right? Well, normally it would, but piranha plants on parade is something that piranha plant reprise does not, a secret exit. This secret exit also just so happens to be one of my favorites in this game. It is extremely difficult to know where it is. You'll spend a ton of time searching around the level, only to come up empty-handed. However, if you're using the exclamation mark block badge, you'll be able to get a pretty helpful hint, as some of them will actually appear in the foreground. That means there must be some way to get there, and it's likely around the spot where you can actually see these blocks. Eventually, you'll figure out that you can get on top of this landmass here, and by running across it, you'll find a pipe that brings you into the secret exit. I liked finding that quite a lot, and I think it makes the first version of this stage just barely edge out its harder version, though I could definitely see myself changing on this later. 19. Sunbaked Desert Palace Well, it's been a little bit since we ran into a palace level. Being the final level of Sunbaked Desert, quite a lot of the level's mechanics actually come from the other desert levels. A large chunk of this stage has sand as the floor, which makes jumping around the obstacles here quite a bit more difficult. The main thing this takes from the desert levels, though, would have to be its wonder effect, as it messes with the level's speed. However, instead of just slowing down or just speeding up, this actually is a combination of both. Every so often, the level will change if it's going super fast or if it's going super slow, which makes moving through here a lot more interesting. You 
always have to be ready for this beat to change. The rolling balls and fire bars here also work really well with the changing speed. Of the palaces, I think this one just has one of the more interesting layouts. As for the boss fight here, while it is still Bowser Jr., it's not too bad. It takes place in water bubbles, so you have to actually try and swim on top of Bowser Jr. to damage him here. I think it's pretty clear to see why this palace is placing so far above the other two we've seen. 18, Deep Magma Bog Palace. Following up that palace, we have another one that I think just barely is able to edge it out. The main reason behind that would be its wonder effect. While I love the one in that last level, this palace actually lets you turn into a slime, which is also just so much fun. There are a ton of enemies in this palace as well, which makes avoiding them as the slime quite difficult. For the most part, you stay on top of the dragon wheels we saw in previous levels, and since they're spinning, it makes movement on them a bit trickier. I especially like how this ends, having us jump between several dragon wheels vertically to reach the wonder seed. Once we're through with that, we get to our final and probably best Bowser Jr. fight in the game. The reason I like this one best is just because it has the most gimmicks thrown on here. Not only is it aesthetically really nice as it's put in the silhouette style, but the platforms here are also able to walk based on how you're standing on them. On top of all of that, Bowser Jr. also clones himself, which means you have to try and hit the main Bowser Jr. instead of the fakes. Overall, I'd say this is definitely a great boss fight. Just a shame this stupid kid had to be used a billion times. 17, Roller Koopa Derby. This level shows off the brand new variants of the Koopas in a really fun way. Running through this while avoiding them is pretty entertaining, and I think a large part of that is because of the unique use of slopes. I also have to say, I love the second purple coin here, which requires you to kill these Rolo Koopas who are just enjoying their day up in the sky you monster. The real reason this level places so highly though comes down to the wonder effect, which I think might be one of the best wonder token collect-a-thons in the game. You have to collect five wonder tokens, but you can't see where you're going basically at all. That's because the floor is now made up of mostly invisible slopes, only letting you basically see what's directly under you. That makes navigating this section pretty challenging as you have to find where you can actually stand. On top of that, several roller koopas will be racing down these slopes alongside you, which can really easily catch you off guard. This wonder flower was surprisingly great. I enjoyed this a ton. 16, the final battle, Bowser's Rage stage. As the name implies, this is the main story's final level, and I think it's safe to say that it ended off on a pretty high note. I do have to start with a bit of a negative though, this is the only main level in the game to not have any purple 10 coins. I'm really not sure why. I mean, all of the palaces have them, so I feel like they could have squeezed them into this level as well. But alright, there's no real collectibles, so how is the stage itself? Well, it starts off as an auto-scroller. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. The scroll moves incredibly slowly and makes replaying this a bit annoying. The obstacles, though, are really good, as it's sort of a compilation of things we've seen throughout the game. There's the blazing fists, giant rolling ball, dragon wheels, pole blocks, bull rush stampedes, singing piranha plants, king boo, anti-gravity, and it even ends on a pipe worm. I I really like this compilation segment, even if the auto-scroll does make it kind of slow. Of course, this is all just to build up to the main event, being the fight against Bowser. This is easily the best boss fight in the game. Wait, no, I mean the coolest boss fight in the game. Look at him go, whoa, I love cool Bowser, yeah! For the fight, you have to time your jumps off the floor to hit his hands. In order to reach them, you need to jump in sync with the music, which is quite fun to do. I will say, though, this boss is honestly quite easy. You're rarely under direct attack, and when you are, it is pretty easy to dodge. Honestly, the auto-scroller before this is much harder than the boss itself. Still, the fight is a great idea and is among one of the best Bowser fights in the series. Overall, this was a pretty good final level. Definitely things that they could have improved on, but I was satisfied with this ending. 15, where the rumbas rule. This level is focused around the rumbas and spinies, which make navigating on the ground here a bit tricky. Due to the rumbas' ability to break bricks, the stage also changes quite a bit with them rolling around, so it's very important to be careful. Another thing to note here is that this stage also has a huge emphasis on the drill power-up. Not only is it useful to avoid the enemies, but there are also a lot of really good secrets. For the second purple coin, you have to use the drill to dig up through this ceiling, which actually puts you into a different sub-area. You even use the drill to find the stage's secret exit. Instead of falling down this pit toward the wonder flower, if you manage to jump high enough to reach the ceiling, you can actually dig through the wall. This is a really good spot for a secret exit, much better than just having to pick up the Wonder Flower. Speaking of, the Wonder Effect is also really fun here as you actually get to become a ball. This has you roll super fast through the stage, and it's fun to take out as many things as you can without falling. The bowling pin noises here also really elevate this section by making each hit even more satisfying. 14, Fungi Mine Special Dangerous Donut Ride. This level is really neat. You're placed at the top of a tower and you have to ride donut platforms down to the bottom. This gets pretty tense since almost every surface here has spikes covering it, which in turn also makes a lot of the purple coins quite hard to get. Not even the donut platforms are safe, as some of them get infested with hotheads, making the trip down even more difficult. If you are able to survive all of that though, you'll eventually be brought down into a big drop where you can get the Wonder Flower. Fall. 
Yeah, so now forget the donuts, as the rest of the stage, you'll have to fall down all on your own. Instead of spikes, you'll need to avoid these weird bits of poison, which can actually be quite tricky to get around, especially since the walls eventually become infested as well. If that wasn't enough, several enemies will even fall after you, which means they might even be able to drop on your head if you're not paying close enough attention. If you manage to weave in and out of all the obstacles successfully though, you'll eventually be able to reach the bottom and complete the stage. I really like both halves of this level, I think they did a phenomenal job keeping it intense throughout. 13. Missile Mag Mayhem I was actually really surprised by how much I like these enemies. Instead of just dealing damage, you can actually ride on top of them. Thing is though, once you jump on them, they'll start to descend. That means you have to be careful about how exactly you use them, which leads to quite a few interesting scenarios here. Not only are they used to just cross some pretty basic gaps, but they're also used to grab a few purple coins that are hovering over the void. The second one in particular is pretty intense to grab since you have to jump on the missile mag as it's coming towards you. The usage of this enemy is only turned up as the level goes on, with the Wonder Flower spawning in a ton of them that you need to ride. It's so much fun not only avoiding the barrage of missiles flying towards your head, but also using the same missiles to climb up the area and reach the Wonder Seed. This level honestly made me wish they used Missile Mega a lot more, because their mechanics were just so much fun. 12. Cosmic Hoppos This level just felt great to run through. You have to climb up this big tower in the sky while also dealing with Hoppos. They can of course bounce you around, which acts as both a helping hand and oftentimes a harming one too. It's hard to describe why I like this level so much, but it's just really fun. The last purple coin is also really well hidden. What you have to do is notice this Hoppo blocking a hole in the wall, and then you have to move it out of the way bringing you into a new section where you can get the coin. Oh, and I also can't forget about the Wonder Flower. When collected, this Hoppo here will get powered up, so that when you jump on him, you'll instantly be sent to space. Here you don't have any gravity, so you have to try and float around to avoid the numerous spikes and Hoppos coming your way. It can get pretty tight, but I had quite a lot of fun going through this. 11. Secrets of Shava Mansion This level is all about pushing blocks, so having the Shava here as enemies makes a lot of sense. There are a lot of great puzzles revolving around these blocks. For the first purple coin, you have to push one that looks like it's the wall to the room, which is pretty cute. In order to exit this room, you have to first enter into the foreground, push this block, which then reveals a door in the background. I'd even say the shover are extremely well utilized, one of them even guards a purple coin, so you have to make sure to not get shoved off this platform. They're also the main focus of this stage's Wonder Flower. To get to the flower, you first have to solve a push block puzzle, and when you do, you'll get put in this room, and the shovers will begin pushing this massive Bowser statue towards you. Now I don't know about you all, but when I got into this room, I had a panic attack, I literally didn't know what to do, I started running around like a crazy person trying to find a way to escape, but... Okay, what you're supposed to do is push this wall, which fits with the level theme well, but I was just too stupid to notice. For the rest of the Wonder Flower, you just have to run through this room as fast as you can, which is pretty fun. Once you leave the Wonder Flower section, I also like this shove block puzzle where you actually have to build a door. As for the ending, this is actually one of the levels to have a secret exit. In order to reach it, you have to break these blocks, push this into the hole you made, which reveals a pipe that leads you into the exit. I think that's a pretty solid secret, and as a whole, I think this entire level used its gimmick excellently. 10. A Final Uncharted Area, Poison Ruins The level starts off with us running through a ton of moving blocks. Eventually, you have to drop down, which causes the poison at the bottom of the stage to start rising. So from there, you then have to climb through this section as quickly as you can so that you don't get killed by it. This climb does get pretty intense, but it's super fun the whole time. The big highlight of this level, though, comes afterward because going through this pipe gives you access to the Wonder Flower, this being our final example of a slime level. I definitely think this level uses the ability best by far. Not only is it cute to climb around the flagpole, but the platforming here in general is honestly quite tricky. There are even some more moving blocks you have to deal with here as well. Eventually, after squeezing through this level's tight corridors, you're able to reach the final climb, and once you reach the top room, the camera zooms way out. There are a ton of round platforms spinning on tracks here, and you have to jump between them so that you can hit every single flower on top. After touching each flower, the lava in the center will shrink more and more, and collecting all of them will give you the stage's wonder flower. I just really like this stage because I think it did a phenomenal job perfecting the slime gimmick, plus the tower climb at the start was also good. 9. Rolling Ball Hall As the name suggests, the main obstacle you'll be facing in this stage are the rolling balls. The purple coins in this stage are also well placed. The first one is hiding up where the rolling rocks fall and another one requires you to slide down into a darker portion of the cave. The best part of the level though comes from the Wonder Flower, which will tilt the entire cave and cause a giant ball to start rolling after you. Not only is this scary because of how giant it is, but these also act as a one-hit kill. While you're running here, you also have to be on the lookout for five Wonder Tokens, just making this be a bit more tricky. The ball rolls toward you super fast, and it's really tense trying to escape them because one wrong move will end in death. This was definitely a ton of fun. 8. Condarts Away I just really found myself loving the new Condart enemies. Essentially, they'll just fly around the stage, but as soon as they see the players, they'll dart towards them in a straight line, breaking any bricks that get in the way. Trying to run past them quickly or use them to hit a block for you was super enjoyable. On top of the great enemy, the Wonder Flower here is great too. This is the first level that shifts the level to being top down, and it does so phenomenally. The Condarts act as really good enemies here, and there are even some snails and bumpers to up the difficulty even more. This effect was one of the ones that got me the most excited from the trailers, and I must say, it did not disappoint. 
Oh, also the purple coins run away from you now. Seven, Ninji Jump Party. This level aesthetically is one of the most fun in the entire game. First off, I'm already a pretty big Ninji fan because of Mario Maker 2, but the way this level changes due to the Wonder Flower is fantastic. The whole stage turns into a bright yellow party, and your goal is to try and collect all five Wonder Tokens while running through it. You can't just go through it normally though, as you actually have to jump in sync with the music. Not only does every in sync jump brighten the stage and make it look more fun, but it also mechanically changes the stage by moving platforms and even revealing purple coins. Trying to hit every single beat while also collecting all the collectibles was so much fun. Yeah, it's pretty easy in comparison to many of the other stages in the top bit of this video, but man, you can't deny that this one was just pure fun. 6. High Voltage Gauntlet Okay, this level is peak for one simple reason. The Wonder Flower turns you into Metal Mario. This was such a great reference to Mario 64, even playing the Metal Mario theme while it's active. But even looking past that, the rest of this level is fantastic too. The main obstacle in this course are these beams of electricity that turn on and off. Your goal throughout here is to try and time running through them so that you don't take damage, which at points can get quite tense. I also really like that this stage takes place mostly in darkness, as it lets the stage get lit up by these beams of electricity. Pretty much everything about this stage was done perfectly, and I really love that Metal Mario reference, so it had to place high for me. 5. Shining Fall Special Triple Threat Deluge First off, this level starts with the most random 1-1 reference of all time. Like, it has nothing to do with the rest of the level. I guess it's just here to be so retro. But moving past that interesting opening, we get into the actual stage being a top-down obstacle course. This is extremely tricky. Not only are there a lot of bumpers that can push you around, but there are now three Lakitus throwing spike balls at your head. Now you can try your best to outrun them, but you'll eventually run into a wall that'll block your path. The only way to break this wall is with the spike balls thrown by Lakitu, so essentially you have to try and draw their attention and dodge their attacks so that they hit the wall instead of you. This gets super tense, especially if you don't have a power-up. It's super hard to predict where exactly the spike balls are going to land, especially since they might even hit a bumper to bounce around. After that wall, you get the stage's first purple coin, which requires you to run in a circle collecting these flowers and then running into the coin before it falls off screen. This again keeps you in one place long enough for Lakitu to throw a ton of spike balls at you, which I really like. The obstacles for the rest of the stage are just phenomenal as well. It has a ton of fire bars, moving blocks, and more walls that you need to get broken by Lakitu. This is easily one of the most intense levels in the game. 4. Fluff Puff Peak Special Climb to the Beat This level is already infamous for being absurdly difficult. If you remember Jump 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 from earlier, that stage had us jump along some blocks based on the rhythm of the music. Yeah, this stage is that but 10 times harder. You basically have no wiggle room at all. All. It's so bad that getting all three purple coins in one go feels next to impossible without some bad shenanigans. Not only is the timer extremely strict here, but the jumps are too, often having you jump off of one block surfaces. In my opinion though, I love having a challenging course like this. It's super memorable despite how simple it is. It does feel a bit wrong to place it up higher than this because of that simplicity, but I love the challenge so I think it earned its spot here. 3. Color Switch Dungeon Out of every single other level in the game, this one felt the most like a Mario Maker 2 level, and I definitely mean that as a compliment. The central object for this level are the on-off switches introduced in Mario Maker 2, and they're used in quite a few different ways here. They're able to make blocks appear and conveyor belt switch, just like in Mario Maker 2, but they can also flip these one-way platforms as well. That makes this one of the most puzzle-centric levels in the game. In this first section, you have to use the switches to make a path for yourself to a door, but while you're at it, you can also get this purple coin by wrapping around it to the left. To actually get into the door you need to leave, you also need to collect a key, which isn't a Mario Maker exclusive thing by any means, but they're used a lot in that game, so putting keys in this level here made it feel even more Mario Maker like. After that first room, we are brought back into a dark basement area. There are a few hotheads here we need to avoid, but we eventually collect the Wonder Flower, which will spawn in our old friend Cosmic Mario. That turns the segment into a big chase where you have to try and hit the on off switches to clear your path and get to the end before he catches you. This area has you run over the same spots multiple times, meaning you'll very often get pretty close to actually hitting him. After that Wonder Flower intermission, though, we still got a lot of level left. We then have to take these conveyors into the next stage of the puzzle. There are a ton of passing conveyors here, and it's your job to find the best way through them to get to the end. And while you're at it, make sure to also be on the lookout for purple coins. I like how this purple coin actually has us need to bring over water, which is another mini puzzle in of itself. Eventually, after running a few laps around this section, you'll be able to collect the key and also enter into the door, bringing us to the end of the stage. This level not only has a lot of content, but it was extremely fun to go through as well. It feeling almost like a Mario Maker 2 stage was also pretty neat. Okay, the real reason it's at number 3 is because it's the only stage with blue talking flowers. 2. The final test, Wonder Gauntlet. The idea behind this stage is simple, just run through a ton of the game's previous wonder effects. Since this is meant to be one of the game's final levels, it's a pretty great nostalgia trip through everything we've been through, and on top of that, it's pretty dang difficult. I think it's best we just list off all of the effects we see here. That's the only real way to show how good of a job this does at bringing us back through our journey. Throughout this level, we see a pipe worm, a bluebird spinning bubbles, changing speeds, falling pipes, giant hoppy cats, angle 
shellfish flying up from the ground, a silhouette section, walking platforms, missile mags, a ship with a cannon, lightning strikes, a tilt on the stage, a giant hoppo, invisible slopes, and the stage ends with a star rod. Yeah, this has almost anything you could have asked for. This was a great trip down memory lane, and it was a fantastic stage to almost finish off the game. Wait, almost. 1. The Final Final Test Badge Marathon This was the easiest number one of my entire life. I mean, right after I beat this stage, I knew it was my favorite. Not only is it probably the hardest, but it's just conceptually really cool as well. Throughout the game, there are several badge challenges, which let you get accustomed to the game's many badges that can be used to help you in levels. However, each of them only focus on one badge. This level, though, acts as a final test for 10 different badges. Let's just run through this section by section. You start with the game's first badge, the Parachute Cap, where you have to weave in and out of several sugar stars. You have to make sure and collect the flowers here as well though, because if you don't, the poison below you won't lower down. The next section revolves around the floating high jump. It places you on one of these jump platforms and you have to try and get it to move without accidentally landing in any poison. This is probably the simplest of the 10 sections, but I still enjoyed it. Following this up is the dolphin kick segment. The main obstacle you'll be facing here are these electrical beams. How the entire body of water you're in isn't getting electrocuted right now is beyond me, but I really like this obstacle. The beams move quite quickly, so you have to be very precise when timing your kick. This section also has the first purple coin of the level forcing us to go in a full circle. You have to make your turns here super tightly to get it without taking damage. That brings us to the level's first checkpoint and the crouching high jump badge. Now in all honesty, I'm not sure how I feel about having checkpoints. Yeah, it definitely saved me a bunch of frustration, but it feels kind of weird to have a checkpoint in what's supposed to be the game's final gauntlet, which most Mario games don't really do. Anyway, the crouching high jump is used very well here as it's put on conveyors, letting us keep moving while also charging our jump. The wall climb badge just has us making some tight jumps onto some small blocks. This portion has a lot of hotheads and melon piranha plants to up the difficulty a bit. The second purple coin can also be found here. That brings us to one of my favorite sections, being the spring feet badge. Since this badge constantly forces us to jump, it makes dodging these fire bars extremely difficult. Not only are they tall, but they also move quite fast, so you have to be absolutely perfect if you want to make it out of here alive. The platforms around the fireballs also get smaller and smaller, making this probably my favorite section. Then we reach the checkpoint and our last four badges. First is the jet run, which simply has us running off some edges and jumping as late as possible. You also get to ride on some missile megs, which will a fun inclusion. Then we have the boosting spin jump, which we simply have to use to avoid a few spikes. The grappling bind section has extremely tricky jumps with it. Not only do you have to be super precise with timing them, lest you go into some spikes, but you also have to scale a wall as quickly as possible. And that brings us into the final section. Whoever put invisibility last is mean. Here you can get the last purple 10 coin, and to end off the stage, you have to jump onto some blooms, which is not easy. But if you manage to do it, the level finally comes to a close. To me, this is easily the best level in the game, because it was just so much fun being able to use all of these badges in unique and challenging ways. So for probably being the hardest stage in the game, the final final test badge marathon is easily my favorite stage in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you massive Armad fans and hate me for ranking its level low? Let me know in the comments. Wow, this video took a lot out of me. Hopefully you all enjoyed this because I talked about these levels way more than I was expecting. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.